Everybody. Thank you for downloading this mini movie review. This one is about 2018's Upgrade. So we're going to get a little sci-fi on this one, a little science fiction, if you will. A little cyberpunk action body horror, according to Wikipedia. This is a film written and directed by Lee Wannell, starring Logan Marshall Green, Betty Gabriel, and Harrison Gilbertson. And it was produced, this movie was produced by Jason Blum under the Blumhouse Productions banner. It was released to South by Southwest Festival March 10th, 2018, and then released to the United States in Ju June 1st, 2018, and then to Australia June 14th, 2018. It runs approximately 100 minutes, and it did fairly well box, box office-wise. The budget was three to five million, and the box office was 16.4 million, so that's pretty cool. It looks like it's got some decent reception. I'm excited to see it. It's been a while since I've seen anything that's like super tech kind of horror sci-fi i don't know cyberpunk's kind of a fun word uh but also like in the production apparently with the uh, upgrade the principal photography on the film began in march 2017 in wannell's hometown of melbourne the editing took place in sydney so this is this is pretty much an all straight uh, australian film basically the short summary of this is there is a man who is implanted with this chip so he can control his body after he gets paralyzed from a mugging uh, we'll go more into the rest of this later. I don't want to get too much into it again. It looks like it's going to be fun. I mean, Blumhouse Productions is also the producers of, like, Get Out, Happy Death Day, and The Purge, and those movies are, are pretty fun. So I'm excited. I'm going to go check it out, and I'll be back and let you guys know what I think. Let me, let me upgrade ya, grade ya. That's right, I just finished watching 2018's Upgrade. It was interesting. It's an interesting uh, little tech film. Let's get into it. Like I said, it's very tech heavy. Not always my thing, personally, because some of that stuff kind of freaks me out. But yeah, let me, let me get started here. So I'll do like a rough synopsis here. So there's this dude played by Logan Marshall Green, and his name is Gray Trace. It's kind of weird because, like, in this world, there are super electric cars that are, like, real high-tech. They have their own self-driver. It talks to you. You can, you know, just hang out in it. They do whatever. But then there's also, like, regular cars. So that's what he does. He's a stay-at-home mechanic. And he's not super into all the tech stuff. Like, they also, him and his wife, Asha, have this really high-tech house. Like, you walk in and it tells you the temperature and all the things like that. And, like, it talks to you about everything and for me that's too much that's too annoying that's too I I feel like I'm not doing anything you know like in my life if, if something's doing it for me that much and that's kind of how Gray feels and that's why it, it's interesting to me that there's like this clash of some people who have really high tech stuff and some people who don't later on there's a homeless camp and then there's just like some different it's just I mean I guess that's how it would be a little bit because not everyone can afford certain things like that so then it's kind of like this spectrum of technology which some you know things today are like that too it's just it's a lot <laughs> and so his wife asha works for this company called cobalt and they contribute to like human computer augmentations like ai stuff so he fixes this car up i think it was like a firebird or something and he needs to go drive it over to his client aaron keen who is this uh technology innovator for this company and the company's called vessel he, go, he has his wife follow in the high-tech car so that they can drive back together, which technically, for me, I was like, if it's a high-tech auto-piloting car, why don't it just follow her and then drive him back? Does she have to come? I don't know. I guess he just wanted her to. And, I mean, their, their relationship is great. It's fine. You know, they're, I, I like the actors and stuff. They did a good job. Um, so he get, they get to this guy's house, and it's real high-tech. Like, he gets there, and he's like, wait, do you see this? And they go to, like, this desert area in between this rock formation and just go downstairs and he lives like underground by the sea and you're like okay and it's like all techie inside and he's playing with 
Aaron Keen is playing with this cloud, and I guess it's like a something similar to like the cloud, but it's an actual cloud, and it's floating above him, and it's like lightning and thunder, and they're just staring at him like, what are you doing? And he's like, this is my cloud. And I'm like, all right. And so they give him the car, and not sure why he wants the car, but while they're there, Aaron Keen starts telling him all about a chip that he made called Stim. It can it can be like a, a, a fake brain for something. Basically, he says it can it can help mankind. It can do anything. It can calculate. It can talk to you. It, and it looks like a little like nano bug, like those little hex bug things, those little toys for kids. Kind of looks like one of those, like a little chip. They're like, oh, that's crazy, you know, whatever. And so they leave Aaron's house and they're in the high tech car, the electric car, and they're driving along and they're just kind of hanging out and they decide that they should fool around in the car and it's funny to me because as soon as they start to the car just like starts to mess up like no put your seatbelt back on the car's like stop it and then something i think takes over the car or somehow the car malfunctions because like i said there's so much different little tech things that it's kind of hard to see the like the balance here which maybe there is no balance i don't know anyway the car starts malfunctioning and taking them to this like shitty part of town which is where he used to grow up gray did and it malfunctions and it starts speeding up and they're freaking out. And he gets the seatbelt back on Asha right before the car flips and crashes. And he lands down on the roof because it, it, it turns upside down. And they slide right into this like homeless camp with all these tents and they're near like this harbor, I think. And these people come up, this car, a couple cars show up and these guys with handkerchiefs and stuff around their face start pulling them out. And at first they're like, oh, we're going to help you. And then it's like, well, why do you have that on your face? Um, and the reason they do is because there's these drones that fly around that have cameras everywhere and can watch everything. And it's like little, I guess like little cop drones and it maps everything. So like the drones come around seeing what's going on because of this accident. And they're like, we don't want our faces to get seen. And so they drag Asha and Gray out onto the pavement. This guy shoots Asha right in front of Gray and Gray's freaking out and they hold him down. And then they kind of do this like stun gun thing to the back of him and kind of paralyze him. And so when he wakes up, he finds out that he is a quadru- a wheelchair-bound quadriplegic. He can't do anything from the neck down, is basically what I'm saying. And so, like, three months later, after he's fully recovered for what he can be, you know, he gets all situated. They've high-teched his house up to where it can give him, like, medication and everything. And he, he goes back home and his mom's there. And I kind of like the re- relationship with him and his mom. There's this one scene I thought was nice because it's like at first he was like, why are you here? This house does everything for me. And she's just like, well, you know, I'm just just helping you out. And then while she's trimming his beard, he starts to kind of have a meltdown and start crying and she's holding him. And I'm like, yeah, that, that was probably why she was there. Like she knew he still hadn't really grieved for the situation. So I was like, that was kind of sweet. Like I like I like the mom being in there. And so he wants to pretty much die. He tries to kill himself. He has the house give him multiple injections of the same painkiller until it tells him it can't and then it calls an ambulance for him. And so he wakes up in the hospital after trying to kill himself and Aaron Keen is there and he tells him that he could put stim into his spine and give him more motor function for his body so he could walk again. And at first Gray was like, I was trying to to bow out. I don't want to walk again. I want to go. And he's like, well, we could try it and it would be experimental. And what would Asha think? You know, like she'd want you to try. And he's just like, fine. So they go and this part seemed kind of quick because they go and they do this cool surgery like in this like geometric space. It's really neat how they do some of the stuff. I like the effects. It was good. And man, they really dig into that spine though. Woo! They had like a real dig in there and then they put the little chip in there. And it seemed for me, I feel like he would have to rest a little longer. But within like a couple hours after coming out of surgery, they're like, do you want to try to move? And he's like, all right. And then he slowly but surely is able to walk. Still kind of like walking a little like a robot. So he signs this non-disclosure agreement with Aaron and he can't tell anyone he's supposed to pretend that he's still paralyzed and just go on about his day and just report back anything that's going on with this implant because they're not really sure exactly how it works in him. For me, I feel like if you sign that and it's that important that you would have him stick around in your complex, it's not like the guy didn't have space. I think that's where they did the surgery was his place. He lets him go anyway, so it's like, okay. So he gets back home. He's got this thing, you know, he's walking around. He's like, oh, I can't believe I can walk, you know, whatever. So while he was paralyzed, his mom took him to meet this detective. And this detective, this chick, she uh, somehow gets him all these files for his wife's murder. At least I think he gets it from her. Maybe he got it from, maybe he got it from Aaron. I don't, I don't know. Maybe he did. Yeah, it was Detective Cortez. Somehow he gets all these files. I can't quite remember. 
He gets the files, which they were a lot, video files of the drone stuff. And I'm like, I don't know why he has all this, but he's looking at it. And as he's doing this, this is where it gets kind of fun. Cause apparently the stem thing can talk, but only he can hear it. So it's like in his head and it's just like, hey, what's up? He's like, whoa, whoa. He thinks he's gone crazy, you know? And he's like, no, I can use your brain to like tell you different things. And, it, and it's kind of weird because it's like, it seems a little too controlling for me, which I mean, that's eventually the point down the road. But I feel like if the guy didn't run any human trials yet, that maybe this isn't like a... The, I feel like there could have been some warning. You find out later Aaron didn't know this thing could talk. At least that's what he says. But it's like, I don't understand still why the... We'll get to it. It just gets... The ending kind of plues out for me. But the rest of the movie's fun. So, anyway. He finds out, like, who's doing all this stuff and to and who killed his wife. And he goes and, like, starts, like, taking people out. And this is where it gets kind of fun. First of all, the, the, the gore, the blood, the effects, all that were really fun. And they were intense. They were a little hard to watch. It was, it was, it was fun. I also really enjoyed the voice in his head. I thought that was, it was kind of neat. And then at some points when he wants to fight, the little stem thing can take over his body. And he starts like doing all these like real fast, like movements, like, watch out, watch out, watch out, you know, just like taking stuff down. It's like, it's real fun. He's like throwing people in the walls and all that the action was really good. And so he starts taking people out. You know, there's some fun scenes with all that. And he's learning about who did what. It's all about finding out who, why his wife was murdered. He finally tells Aaron that this thing's talking to him. Aaron's like, you can't be doing this because they're going to track you. And I'm not supposed to be doing human testing. It's supposed to be a non-disclosure agreement. And apparently he can turn off this stem inside of him if he can track, because he has a tracker on him. Which I feel like, I don't think a lot of this was in this contract. Grace seems like he didn't know this, which I'm like, I don't know if I would necessarily agree. Because, yeah, this guy can track him now. And this stem thing is so smart. It can, like, check things out and make decisions and give advice and run intelligence gathering. Somehow it takes over another car during this car chase scene, which I thought was weird considering it's inside of him. But some of that stuff was like, I don't know, it was a little all over the place. But it was still fun. And so he's going to go tracking out all the people who have been killing and find out that there's this ringleader. His name is Fisk. Aaron's onto him and he starts shutting down the body. And so Stim is telling him, like, you're going to get shut down if you don't hurry up and find some hacker that can sever the connection. And I'm like, well, that seems a bit easy. We could have done that probably to begin with. So he heads to this, like, real weird, crazy part of town because Stim apparently knows a hacker. He finds this chick and she starts to hack him. And there's, like, these guys that are that are into this, like, VR stuff where they're for days or weeks. They stay hooked up to this computer and they're standing and they, they also have like IVs of, I guess, nutrients and things to keep them awake. And they're just like dancing around playing some sort of game because they don't like the world that they're in. And it was kind of, that was kind of crazy to me because I'm like, they're moving a lot. That seems like a lot of work. I would rather just, if I was going to VR for days or weeks, I think I'd want to sit or lay back, you know. But that was kind of crazy. And so she can't get it all done. There's some people coming for him because he's being followed. And so she leaves. Her name is Jamie. She leaves. And so it's kind of weird because... The stem, the stem was not working. Like, he was barely able to move. And then all of a sudden, the stem's control comes back, and he's able to, like, murder and beat the crap out of these guys. I don't know how, because I thought Aaron got rid of that, but I don't know. He comes home. His mom finds out he can walk. He's like, what? And so he tells her. And then Detective Cortez is starting to catch on about what he's doing, realizing that he can pr something's going on. And she starts following him around and, like, bugging his room and stuff. And then, like I said, there's, like, a car scene with them. And yeah, so there's just a bunch of things going on. And so at the end here, he comes across, he meets up with Fisk. And he wants to find out why he killed Asha. Fisk reveals he was only hired to paralyze Grey so that he could get the stem. So he's starting to find out, like, there was a reason behind the attack. It wasn't had anything to do with Asha. It had to do with him. That's why he was only paralyzed and, like, stunned and she was killed. She just happened to be in the crossfire. And so he's really upset. And it's cool because, like, I mean, it's not cool, but it's cool. Like, one of the things I liked about the movie, these guys, like Fisk and these guys, they have, like, this gun implant in their arm, which I thought was kind of fun. Like, it runs all the way up the inside of the arm, and then there's a part on the inside of the arm up by the bicep there where you can put bullets in. So, like, this guy's walking, and he's, like, putting bullets in like it's a, a rifle, and then he's, like, Ch -ch -ch, and then it comes out the, the palm of your hand, the bullet. So, like, that's how Asha got shot. Like, he didn't even have a gun. It was just, like, poof. And that part was kind of cool. I liked I liked that whole tech stuff. That was neat. And so him and Fisk have this like crazy fight because they're both upgraded. And so they're just like, wah, wah, wah. And so eventually he kills Fisk. And he finds out that Fisk had a message from Aaron. And 
realizes that Aaron is the one who was behind it. So he goes back to Aaron's place and kills all his, his guards or whatever. And then when he gets there to confront Aaron because he's like, why did you do this to me so that you could run this, this testing and put the stem inside of me? And this is where it gets kind of silly to me. So Detective Cortez is there too. And Gray ends up like grabbing her and throwing her and she gets like knocked out or something. Well, he grabs her and just throws her. I don't know. It's kind of a neat scene where he grabs her because she touched him and she probably shouldn't have done that. So what Aaron Keen says is that Stim forced him to do his bidding. And that's where I find it a little weird because I'm like, this thing was a tiny little nanobot. How would it, apparently he, it, it had like a little earpiece in Aaron's ear that was telling him what to do and making him do everything. And I'm like, how, what is it going to do? I mean, just kill it, just break it. I don't see how the stem has all this power before it could even get put in a body. So he tells the plan of that stem forced him to do this because he wanted to dominate all the aspects of Aaron's life to become human. So he wants to take, stem wants to kill Aaron too because he, Aaron's the only one who can make other stems. I don't understand why this little machine is so self-aware all of a sudden and could have that much power. That's the only thing I really don't get about this movie. Stim kills Aaron basically by making Grey do it. And so Grey tries to fight Stim to get control, but then he shoots himself in the neck. And it's weird because it wasn't until they really got to that house of Aaron's that it, that Stim got mean. Like it seemed like he was fine up and then all of a sudden he got real vindictive and I was like, all right. So then he wakes up in this hospital room and Asha's there and she says that they were in this car crash and that it's all a dream. But really, he's just been put into some alternative universe where he can be happy because Stim has completely taken over his body because he broke his mind. And so now Stim is an actual in Grey's body. Grey is in this magical world somewhere where Asha's alive. The Stim in Grey's body shoots Detective Cortez and then just walks away in his new body. And that's the end of the movie. I liked it. The ending and, and all that seemed a little predictable and a little weird that it would have that much power. So it kind of threw me off. The action and the intensity and the effects and all that were really fun. So I did enjoy that part of the movie. So all in all, I'd say it was pretty good. And apparently, according to Wikipedia, last August, Jason Blum commented on Twitter that there are plans for a sequel. So that could be something. Um, I guess maybe they would see what happened to his body and it would go on and maybe he would go to make more stims. I don't know. Because it seems like he didn't want any more stims because Aaron was killed because he was the only guy who could make them. So I don't know. But all in all, it was a pretty enjoyable movie. I liked it. I liked all the tech stuff for the most part. If I had to rate it, I would rate it in protein shakes. So I'm going to give it six out of 10 protein shakes. Definitely give it a whirl, especially if you like the cyberpunk tech stuff. It was, it was pretty fun. So for 2018's upgrade, I give it six out of 10 protein shakes. Thank you very much for listening to this mini movie review.